Wouldn't you like to know which lakes near you are hiding the biggest bass? A brand new study just pinpointed three factors that grow true giants. And most anglers guess at least one of them wrong. Based on the research, I'll show you how to spot these lakes before anyone else. So this is a really cool study. It was just published in October of 2025, peer reviewed, and it was done by a team of researchers at Mississippi State University. But what they did was based it on actual surveys and catches from Big Bass Lakes in Texas for a long time. And it actually took a look at giant bass. And we're talking eight to 13 pounds and bigger. So true longer bass. It's a really a groundbreaking study. Get some insight into what lakes hold these big fish and also how many of these fish, how many of the eight pounders grow to 10 pounders and how many of the 10 pounders grow to 13 pounders. Let's dive into it. So the main thing this research wanted to look at was big bass and where do they grow best and how many of these big fish actually grow up, continue to keep growing and become bigger and bigger, going from just a giant bass to a true trophy class one. In this case, eight pounders up to 13 pounders. So the research has pointed out that, you know, regular sized bass have been studied a lot and bass are the most sought after game fish in the US but big bass, I mean, everybody wants to catch a big one. They're very, very highly sought after. They're kind of an indicator of lakes overall health. Lakes that grow big ones are probably a really good lake. Most of the, the lakes don't just have a few bass and then have some big ones. It's usually the ones that have great big ones are known as the best lakes out there. So they wanted to see of the factors that contribute to, to those fish, like the genetics. So obviously there's Florida strains and stuff you can add. And then the limits you can put on the lakes, whether it's a slot limit or restrictive limits, and then angling pressure as well. Which of those things contribute to these fisheries and make them trophy fisheries? Now the challenge was, obviously these big bass are rare. They You have to somehow get them. And then the problem is usually, if you wanna actually age a fish to see how old it was, you would have to kill that fish, remove the ear bones, and then they look at growth rings. And the problem is, as they get older, these growth rings aren't really clear. So you have to take a trophy fish out, you have to kill it, and then even when you do it, you're not sure exactly how old this fish is conclusively. Kind of a bad way of doing it. So what they did in this study that made it groundbreaking was they found a different data source to take a look at these big fish. Now the data they used it's actually the Share Lunker data in Texas. Now, a lot of people know about the Share Lunker program in Texas here. Fish over 13 pounds, if you catch one during the spring, it's actually turned into the state. They have a hatchery, they spawn those fish in captivity, they raise those fingerling, the babies in captivity, and then they turn them back out to the lakes. So you grow, you take those superior genetics, similar to what you do in livestock or some of these trophy deer management places, you take those superior genetics and then you reintroduce them into the lake. And since they're spawned in captivity, you get a higher survival rate. Well, another thing that Texas started doing over the years, and it's kind of cool for me, I was actually part of this uh, program, all of us anglers were, but at marinas around the state then, or you can go online, they wanted anglers to start reporting all catches of fish eight pounds and bigger. And they've done this for a number of years now. So you don't necessarily have to bring the fish in and weigh it at the marina. All it takes is the digital scales, you weigh it and report it. Now in Texas, they've gotten a ton of this data over the years. Places like where I used to guide at Lake Fork, it was kind of a badge of honor, all the guides, and we had our guide customers. Like if you caught a fish, it was kind of bragging rights. And then fishermen, you know, they they, want, they reported it. So, you know, at places like uh, Sam Rayburn and Toledo Bend and Fork and all these legendary spots uh, over the years at Fork, they would do it at the marinas. And over the years now, you were able to do it online. So they're getting a pretty big, uh, basically database of all these big fish caught in Texas. And then what they were able to do, the scientists here, was to do a mathematical analysis and some regression. And they could actually take a look and get a pretty statistically significant idea of different fisheries and look at the growth rates of fish by using some advanced mathematical models. So they broke these fish into three different categories and they called them 3.6 kilograms, 4.5 kilograms, and 5.9. To you and me, that means the lunker category was eight pounds or bigger. Then the elite category, that famous 10 pounder, 
and then the true legend those are 13 pound and bigger fish and the and most of these fish especially the 13s and stuff a lot of these are weighed in marinas so these aren't these aren't made up numbers or just pie in the sky in terms of the number of records now they did this from january of 2018 through august of 2024 so this is fairly current and they had over 1,800 records, so this is a lot. And then the other thing they looked at is they wanted lakes, they looked at 20 reservoirs in Texas that had at least 30 of these. So they felt that was statistically significant. We're not talking lakes that just popped off one single fish. These are lakes like Lake Fork, OH Ivy, that are kicking out big fish after big fish. So believe it or not, many, many moons ago, I was actually a calculus tutor when I was in college. But a lot of that stuff I've forgotten, and uh, looking at these mathematical models, you can get pretty bogged down in it. The simple answer on this is they made a line, a slope, and they took numbers of 8-pound fish, 10-pound fish, and then 13-pound fish, and looked at that slope, how many were falling off. And basically, if that line was pretty steep, uh, it meant there were a lot of 8-pounders, but not many got to 13. On other lakes, it was kind of a gentle slope where there were pretty high numbers of 8, and a lot of them moved to 10-pounders, and a lot of them moved to 13-pounders. What they did now was compare that to the number of factors in the lake, like the management and the conditions, and they wanted to break down and see how those correlated. So the factors they looked at in the lake itself to see if this contributed to how many big fish there were, there was a total of 10 of them. So they looked at the reservoir size, how old the lake was, you know, obviously the, the structure and, and cover decays. Uh, they looked at the depth of the reservoir. They looked at the trophic state that basically most of these lakes are eutrophic, which means they're more fertile. But how fertile are, are they? You think of really fertile ones, you know, if you get massive algae blooms, they're kind of that really dark green, like crazy fertile versus like a very infertile lake uh, would be ones that are that crystal clear blue and stuff. We don't really get many of those in Texas, especially in East Texas where most of these lakes are. So they looked at how uh, fertile they were, how much plankton was in there. Then Florida bass genetics, we know that those are those, obviously the Florida bass uh, in a lot of the southern states grow up to be bigger. So they looked at how often they were stocked. And then they also looked at what percentage of the fish within that reservoir actually had Florida genes in them. Then another thing they looked at was human population density within basically 60 miles of the lake. They used that as an indicator of the bigger the cities around them, the more people around them, the more fishing pressure there was. And then the last thing that they can kind of control the lake on were the length limits. Do they have a 14 inch limit, like a lot of lakes in Texas, or a 16 or 18 inch limit, or places like Fork, there's a slot limit, 16 to 24 inches. So basically they took these curves of how many big fish these lakes had and they held on to the big ones, and then they correlated it to these factors. And three of them emerged as very significant, basically three factors led to more fish showing up as 10 and 13 pounders. Those are the factors that they looked at, but what about the results? This is where I'm really excited about this. And what they looked at overall for all the lakes that they estimated that about 23% of the fish made it from, if they were an eight pounder, about 23 and a half percent of those were gonna make it to a 10 pounder. But for an eight pounder to make a 13 pounder, what were the odds one was going to go from 8 to 13? Only about 2.5% of those fish overall would actually make it from 8 to 13. That's a big jump. But if a fish was a 10 pounder, what were the odds that it was going to become a 13 pounder? And it's over 1 in 10, 10.5%. So that's pretty cool. Those 10 pounders, there's like a 1 in 10 shot that thing's going to be a 13 pound fish. And let's keep in mind, you know, 13 pounders are huge. That's a monumental fish here. So to me, one of the first things I see from this is the fact that, man, if you have a 10 pounder, take care of that thing. That's got a one in 10 shot of being a 13 pounder. If you wanna catch the fish of a lifetime, let's handle these carefully. It's pretty, that's pretty rare uh, company there with those big fish. That's not a whole lot of them. Like I said, only 2.5% of those eight pounders are gonna make to 13. If you have a 10, take care of it because that thing's got a shot at being a true giant. Now, the interesting thing here was how much this growth rate and the graduation from 8 to 10 to 13 varied per lake. Now, the model predicted that 23.5% of the fish would make it from 
eight pounders up to 10 pounders. And the median, again, not the model or the average, but the median of all these lakes was about 20% graduated. Some of the lakes contributed more, some less. Now, individual lakes, some of those lakes only graduated like 4% of the fish is what they estimated went from eight pounders up to 10. So they were kind of capped. Those fish didn't continue to grow. Now, OHIV on the other end of the spectrum was like the quickest grower and up to 45% of those fish that were eight pounders were expected to go up to 10 pounders. So what you see here is that 20%, about roughly 20, 23% moved from eight to 10% or eight to 10 pounds across the state of Texas. But from lake to lake, it could only be 4% moved on to only 45% moved on. And that's where the individual factors that we talked about, link limits and genetics and all that stuff, that's where they took a look to find out specifically, how do I know which lake, eight pounders they kind of cap out and which lakes are they gonna truly grow giant fish? So remember, there were 10 factors they took a look at. They looked at the age of the lake, the size of the lake, the depth of the lake, how fertile it was, the Florida stocking frequency, the percent genetics of Florida traits, the human population nearby or the fishing pressure, and then link limits. Of those, three of them were significant. Can you guess the three? Well, the first one that had a huge impact was the human population nearby. And again, this is within 60 miles, and the, the higher the population, the lower number of fish actually grew to a larger size. So basically less fish went from eight to 10 to 13 pounds. And that makes sense. Now this isn't a stocking, or excuse me, a shocking test where they went out and shocked the fish. These are self-reported by anglers. These are actual fishing catches. So this could be one of two things. Remember, this is correlation, not causation. So it, it doesn't necessarily prove one causes the other. It could be a couple different factors here. Obviously more fishing pressure. There could still be those big fish there, but maybe fishermen aren't catching them. Somewhere like Lake Fork, that's pretty close to Dallas. All these people are nearby. It's getting hammered every single weekend. Well, maybe those great big fish are out there, but people just aren't catching them. Catching them. Or it could be they're getting caught repeatedly over time, and a number of the fish, when they're six, seven, eight, nine pounders, are getting gut hooked or being held too long. Something's ha happening. Somehow those fish could be dying because of handling. Or it could just force them out, all the fishing pressure. Maybe it forces them out to the middle lake where they can't grow as fast. We don't necessarily know why, but it came across pretty clear here. If it's a lake that's remote out in the middle of West Texas where it's not getting a lot of fishing pressure, more likely you're gonna grow great big ones. If it's close to Dallas or Houston, San Antonio, something like that, tons of fishing pressure, the odds they grow up big get smaller. Now, the second factor that played a part here was Florida bass genetics, but it wasn't how often they stocked Floridas, it was the actual Florida bass percentage. So at these Texas lakes, they'll do shocking studies and then they, they'll take these fish in, they'll do, do samples or scale samples or blood samples, I'm not sure which, but they actually look at the genetics of these fish and they can tell you if they're 100% Florida bass, if they're a mix, you know, maybe their grandparent was a, a Florida bass and they're 75% northern strain, 25%, they can actually take a look at, at that. And the higher the percentage in the population of Florida bass genes, the higher numbers of fish went from eight to 10 to 13. So having the Floridas in there was important. Stocking Floridas obviously is how you get it but you need to make sure it's not just throwing a bunch of Floridas at it, you have to actually change the genetic makeup. So basically the Florida bass gene is what can grow big. If you get enough of those in your population, you're gonna have a better chance of growing the big ones. So stocking them is important, but you need to make sure you're getting enough Floridas in there to grow them bigger. Now the third factor that contributed was how trophic or how fertile the lake was. And actually, this was a little bit of a paradox that basically the most fertile waters, if they were too fertile, they actually had lower rates of fish growing up to larger size. You wanted a fertile lake, and that supports the bottom of the food chain, those phytoplankton and stuff that, that the shad and the, and the fingerling stuff feed on. 
But if you got too much of it, if it was too fertile, that actually hurt it. And they weren't exactly sure. Again, it's a correlation, not causation, but they speculated it could have been stressful, such as uh, increasing, you know, if it's darker water, it's increasing water temperature, it could be lower oxygen, that that uh, bottom of the food chain could be putting out uh, toxins. They weren't exactly sure, but basically there were a number of factors there that if the lake got too fertile, if it's you know that real dark green, too many algae blooms and stuff, it could actually be counterproductive instead of actually helping the bottom of the food chain and uh, helping fish grow even more. So based on what this study shows here, if you're looking for top lakes around you that have big bass in them, you basically want three things. You don't want a lot of people living close to it. You want a lake that has high amounts of Florida genetics in it, not just stocking it, but you need to check and see if there's sampling that a lot of times the state will publish this that actually have a high percentage of the population being having Florida genes in them. And then finally, you want the lake to be fertile, but that Goldilocks zone of not being too fertile. And then one more takeaway from this study, how many of these fish do you think passed away every year. How many do you think, what, what do you think the mortality rate was? I was kind of shocked by this. Once they got to eight pounds, they estimated that 58.1% of them died every single year. So only like 42% of these big fish uh, actually survived to the next year. Whether that's angling pressure, they just died of old age or whatever it was. Uh, to me, that's a, man, you lose a lot of those every year. So again, that just shows you how important it is to take care of these fish so few of them get to that size and to pass it on. Another thing to keep in mind too, again, this is angler catches. So these are showing lakes where they're actually being caught. Do these fish actually live in the other lakes, these pressured ones, and they're out there and we're just not catching them or they're just like a lake fork, a lot of these fish, you know, guys, even with the live scope, they see them, they just will not bite. So maybe those fish are out there, they're not being caught. These are showing where they are getting caught. Obviously the ones with less angling pressure, either if there's more or if they're just, they're just easier to catch. Either way, if you wanna catch them, that's where you wanna go. But it's pretty interesting, it shows here that putting more Florida genes into the population, if it's the right sort of lake, that shows pretty conclusively that once you get that population up, get more Floridas in there, obviously you're gonna grow more big fish in these southern lakes. So hopefully the agencies do take a look at that. You know, as it stands right now, a lot of agencies just say, well, we're stocking floors and they just throw some in there, but they don't follow up. Like I said, in a lot of the Texas reservoirs, what they do is they actually look at the makeup of the fish and you really have to understand that, how many Floridas are in the population, what the percentage of the Florida gene is, just throwing some fry out there and having half of them eaten by uh, other bass and stuff or crappie when you first throw them out there, it's not going to help. You really have to get the percentage of the Floridas up to a higher level to start seeing those great big fish. And speaking of catch and release and big fish, Check out my study breakdown of gut hook fish, whether you should leave the hook in or take it out. Plus the rest of my science playlist helps you break down the factors in studies that helps you catch more big fish.